this is what we're gonna test and see if it changes. And the good news is, super simple guys. And I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna go around the other side of the truck. What's up guys, this is part two of troubleshooting the AC in this 2011 F-250 pickup truck of mine. Air compressor clutch is cycling on and off is basically in a, in a nutshell what we're dealing with here. There's a video, I'll put it up above, part one, where we replaced the high pressure side sensor and unfortunately that did not solve our problem. So step two was to check the evaporator temp probe and see if maybe that needs to be replaced because that's also a common failure in these trucks. Unfortunately, the location of that probe is in the air box deep inside the bowels of the dash. That's about a 10 hour labor job to replace, but thanks to YouTube, love you guys, I found out that the location for the plug on that probe is actually pretty easy to get to and it's right behind your glove box. So you could at least test it. And then from there, if that is your issue, there's a few different options you can go with to get it fixed out in a permanent fashion. So we're gonna try that out today, but first I wanna show you guys why I think it may be the temperature probe, and I'm gonna show you how I came to that conclusion. So bear with me. All right, first thing I wanna show you guys is I got a new ODB reader. This is a great little reader, and it's a game changer, guys. You see this switch? If you look right there, it says MS can and HS can. And for those of you guys who aren't familiar with reading the computers and the diags in these vehicles, and I'm not a pro by any stretch, trust me guys, if I can do it, y'all can do it. So most of your typical little Bluetooth ODB readers that you get from Amazon or whatever, they work great, but they read very minimal data from your truck. So there's things like your HVAC system, your, uh, I don't know, radio, like in this truck's got heated seats, things like that. All that's connected to a computer and there's there's temperature, uh, there's temperature readings, there's pressure settings, there's all sorts of other stuff. Your uh, TPMS for your tires, all of that is on what's called the MS, the medium speed can. It's a little protocol, it's all technical for these computers in these trucks. And most of your little cheap readers will only read the high side, which gives you limited information. I found out that you can get a cheap version of one of those Elm type uh, readers with a switch modification and you can actually do it yourself if you're so inclined to do that kind of thing I just bought one it wasn't very much matter of fact I'll put the link down below you guys go check it out and what it does is it gives you the ability if you've got an app that can read that to see the a lot more data about your HVAC type uh, sensors and stuff like that that you just w weren't gonna get with the other cheap reader and that's what we were seeing before the only real uh, sensor of value that I got that I could read on the high speed with my little cheap reader was, uh, what was it? It was that high side pressure switch. Uh, so you could see it cycling the PSI up and down, which was very useful information, but that's all you could see. You couldn't see anything about your evaporator temp. You couldn't see the AC demand, uh, uh, air conditioner, the clutch status or anything like that. So fast forward to having this medium speed can reader I can now see that and I'm going to show you guys. See right there? And and these are just a few of them that I've added. So these are the ones that are useful to me right now. So up top I've got AC clutch position, AC demand, and evap temp sensor, okay? That's the one that we're going to replace today and hope to God that it fixes my issue so I don't have to take this thing to the dealership. So if you guys notice, we're in Texas and external temp is 76 degrees right now. Look at what that evap temp sensor is reading, guys. 46 degrees. So that's, uh, what, 56, that's about 20 degrees off. It should not be that far off. One thing that's important for testing this is you wanna make sure your truck is off and cool. So I actually started it to move it over here to the shop so I was closer to tools, but uh, <clears throat> engine didn't get hot or anything and it's actually been sitting for at least 20 minutes now so there's no temperature at all that that should be skewing this evap temp probe right 
It might just be a little bit different because it's up in the dash and it's in metal, but it should not be that far off. So I'm crossing my fingers that that's what the issue is. All right, got it off Amazon. That's the part number. This is for the 2011 F250. I think it also fits some other models as well, but obviously you can look that up on a parts website and find out exactly what it is. This is what it looks like, guys, right here. So you got, you got your plug. There's a little probe right there. That probe is what actually plugs into the evaporator coils. Really sim simple. That's all this thing does. It's a little thermometer. That's it. And it reads it to the truck. And based on that, it's reading uh, an appropriate temperature. And it's going to cycle on and off your AC to prevent it from freezing up, all that other technical jazz, right? So this is what we're going to test and see if it changes. And the good news is super simple guys and i'm going to show you i'm going to go around the other side of the truck just in case you guys can't find this i'll put the link down below for this one as well but obviously check it to make sure it fits your truck this is a work truck guys so yeah it's dirty don't comment on it look at the floor guys it's terrible all right so if you've never pulled this thing off or out it's pretty simple open it up i've already emptied it out there's a little area right here bend that in and carefully bend it all the way down and it'll sit there and hang you don't want to be too rough with it because this is all plastic right it'll break but if you look up in here now this is the air box and actually almost exactly where this sticker is this is hollow in here if you were to cut a hole right here you'd actually see the probe that we're going to replace and you would see the evap cools where it's just poked right in there so that's that's right behind this air box but and if you're confused about where this thing goes, you can look at the plug, right? There's several plugs in here. There's only going to be one that actually fits this. So if you pan up just a little bit, you'll see right here, that's the plug for this. You just can't see it because it's run through the back and it goes inside this air box here. But what we can do is we can unplug this right here, plug this in, let it dangle. First of all, we're going to see if the temperature... The ambient temperature reads correctly, which it should, and then we're going to turn it on and do the readings and see if this thing's still cycling like it, like it did. All right, so you can see I've got it unplugged. It's just hanging here. Sorry, guys, I got one hand. I'm going to plug this in, and then I'm going to go back to the other side. All right, guys, so I'm back over here on the driver's side. If you look, you can see it hanging right there. Come back to my 4Scan app. 77 degrees 76 external from the truck that's almost dead on the money right we were we were over 20 degrees off just a second ago before i unplugged that other one and plug this one in so that's a good sign so we're going to start this thing up and see what it does then we're going to put it on max make sure it's engaged see the demand switches to on turn that blower down so it's not killing you guys all right it's blowing cold but it did that before too so it doesn't mean it's gonna fix my issue I hope it does what I'm gonna do to test this and this was referenced in the first video is I'm gonna go and add the pressure sensor reading to this so I'm gonna stop this settings and go down to PCM, add, and I just put in AC. Sorry guys, hard to do this one hand. So AC, that's the one. So I'm gonna add that, all standard defaults is fine. I'm gonna go back, and that's there. Go here. All right, this is important guys. So back for that OBD reader, this is the Forescan app, and it's smart enough to tell you, hey, you need to switch that switch back over to the high-speed CAN bus position. So we're going to come over here, flip this over, just like that, and I'm going to come back over here and hit OK, and now it's going to read it. What happened before, if you guys remember from the other video, is it would get down to about 250, and it would start, and then it would go up to 450, and it would turn off. I don't know if you guys can hear it in the video, but when it gets below 250, you can feel a small draw from the pickup truck and you can kind of hear it when it kicks on.
right guys i'll switch back over to the medium bus and i think i don't know if you just saw it but the ac clutch just disengaged again ac demands on and of course the temperature here is not going to change because it's just kind of dangling and it looks like it did not fix our problem unfortunately pressure switch replaced temp probe replaced down there we're still experiencing the issue we know that evap temp sensor needed to be replaced because the temperature was way off so i suspect it's probably the evaporator which is in the dash that means a dash pull i don't know if i'm brave enough to do that or not really brave i guess i just don't know if i'm willing to spend the time to do that i've got so much else going on so i'll keep you guys updated on that i may have to take it to the dealership because i'm just not equipped to troubleshoot an ac system i don't want to open the thing you know it could be a blocked orifice tube or some sort of pressure uh, internal pressure thing right um but i'm not equipped to take that apart i don't have a vacuum pump or anything like that i don't have the tools to pull out the freon in a safe way so i'm not going to be able to do that whatever i do end up finding out i'll i'll throw a video up on part number three just to help you guys out in case you're experiencing the same issue and one of those two fixes wasn't your problem but I do know that this evap temp sensor issue is really common in these trucks and you might be lucky and that might be all it is for you and if it is as you can see it's pretty easy to test the part doesn't cost very much so you're not out much if that's not the problem and I wanted to tell you guys real quick on the probe if it if the probe was the issue you'd have to decide what you wanted to do about it because to do it the right way you gotta take the dash apart that's a 10 hour billable at the dealership probably four or five hours maybe if you did it yourself i don't know if i'm willing to do that there is an option out there that i want to point out in this video that if you're if you're so inclined to do so you can actually cut a hole in your air box and get that probe placed to where it's actually supposed to go and like i showed you earlier that sticker right here if you cut about a two inch square hole right there you can use an oscillating tool or uh, whatever, you know, that'll cut plastic. Just don't go too far. But about an inch or so behind this piece of plastic is where this probe actually goes. And what you can do, cut a hole, take the old probe out, put the new one in, put the piece of plastic back, cover it with Gorilla Tape or something like that, and it'd be a fix. It's debatable if that's the way to go. It's your truck. You don't do what you will with it. I've considered it. I don't know if I'd be brave enough to cut into it or not, but that sure would save you a lot of time and money. That is one way to do it. And I, I've seen, uh, at least in some forums, people talking about that is what they ultimately ended up doing. I'm going to take this thing probably to the dealership and let them diagnose it and see what they come up with. But I suspect it's probably going to be that which is going to be a dash pull. So I'll keep you guys updated. Y'all stay tuned. Uh, hit that like and subscribe button if you guys don't mind and if you guys have any suggestions for me i'd greatly greatly appreciate you uh, throwing them down there in the comment section because i'm new with this ac troubleshooting thing i know just enough to be dangerous as some might say it and uh i'm never too proud for advice guys so if you have any for me put them down below i'd appreciate it and uh yeah we'll catch you on the next video guys thanks for watching